Okay, hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining this quick overview of getting started with Logic Apps and getting up and running with your first Logic App. Uh, the purpose here is to give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough. We're going to create our first app, understand why we would use Logic Apps and some of the different tools that are available through the Azure portal to automate and uh, integrate those things that are most important to you. Uh, so first off, I'm Jeff Holland. I'm a program manager working on the Microsoft integration team uh, here, focused primarily on Logic Apps. And as kind of a starting point, I just want to explain a little bit about why you would use Logic Apps or why it might be helpful. And one of the things that we strive for as a team here is that we want to make a tool that's extremely effective, useful, scalable, and secure to let you to connect pieces and automate different pieces and services that you might be working with. You might have you know, customers or partners or in your own life, things that you want to automate and integrate together. Maybe anytime you get a file or a message uploaded to an FTP server, you need to take that corresponding file, do some compu computations on it and calculations and move it into an Azure blob storage or to a different state. Uh, maybe every time you get emails to a specific account or Twitter, uh, anytime someone mentions you on Twitter, you want to get email reports on that. But this is all possible and very easily uh, accessible through Logic Apps. One of the great things about Logic Apps is that it is a workflow engine in the cloud, and it's a platform as a service offering. So there's so many things that are taken care of for you, right? Uh, as I've been building different Logic Apps using both the many out-of-the-box connectors with Logic Apps, or in addition, building my own and extending the platform with actions that I create or APIs or Azure functions that I add to my Logic App, is that there's so many things that are taken care of for me. For instance, if there's a step in your workflow where it needs to send a message to another service, and that service happens to be down for a few seconds, right? If I was building this completely from scratch, I might not take that into account, and I might have a message that fails or a workflow that fails, uh, but Logic Apps comes out of the box with things like retry policies, so that we'll continue to retry attempts and we'll have error handling as part of it to make sure that your message gets delivered, to make sure that all of your workflows get executed successfully. One of the nicest things about Logic Apps is that we manage scale completely for you. You don't have to worry about making sure that you've provisioned enough VMs or compute or memory. You just say, here's the workflow that I have, and maybe while you're developing it, it only has 10 runs a week. And then as you move through test and production, that might go to a million or 10 million in a week. And you don't have to change anything. We completely on the back end system, Azure Logic Apps will scale out for you to make sure that all of those resources that you need to complete your workflows happen automatically for you. Uh, so that's just a little bit of an overview of why Logic Apps. Um, we'll go into some detail about the Logic App Designer and how it can help you in creating those workflows very quickly. Uh, so you don't have to dig into code. Uh, you can just almost drag and drop and connect systems together. So the scenario that we want to do quickly is we're going to create our first Logic App. We're going to have that Logic App trigger off of an email. So every Logic App is made up of two pieces. You have your triggers and you have your action. So something happens, and as a result of that something, I need to do a series of other steps. And if this, then that, and something else, and something else. So in this case, it's when I get an email, and it's an urgent email, I want to recognize that email, and I need to track that email to make sure I respond. I get lots of emails every day. I'm sure everyone watching this probably gets lots of emails every day. And if I ever get a high, important email, an urgent email, I want to create a corresponding item in a task list that I can track. And personally, I like using Wonderlist. I think it's a really cool service. It's got lots of nice apps and a website to help me manage my task list. Uh, so the logic app I wanna create quickly as our getting started is when I get a new email that's urgent, add a task into Wonderlist. Uh, so to do this, I'm just gonna switch now and show my screen. And we're gonna create this first logic app together. Uh, so here is, as this opens up, here is the Azure portal, uh, and it has here some resources that I can, these are my frequently used resources for me personally. I can create a new resource. I have a dashboard here that has some of the resources that I've created. For now, this is blank. We're saying I haven't really done a whole lot. Uh, but for now, let's just create our first Logic App. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this new button in Azure, and it's gonna list me some different categories. I could search here in the box and say, hey, I wanna create a Logic App, and that will show up in the box. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and not use the box and say web and mobile, which is where Logic Apps is today. 
And here is the logic app, which is currently in preview to build. Uh, now, this is the blade that I need to configure to create my logic app. And there's a few things that it needs. It needs a name for the logic app. So let's say my email alert workflow. It needs to know what subscription I want to use. And I'm going to go ahead and use this subscription, or I could choose a different one. It needs to know what resource group to put this in. Uh, so Azure has all of your resources in different resource groups, which are containers of resources that you can provision and move and have collections of things. In this case, I already have a resource group I want to use. I could create a new one, um, but let's go ahead and select one that I have, which is, let's go ahead and use this one, which is a premium app service plan. Uh, and the last thing I need to configure right now is an app service plan. Um, which allows me to use many pieces of the Azure App Service like websites, mobile apps, and API apps. Uh, but for now, let's just use this App Service plan, which is a premium one. I could use a free one. I could try this in the free trial right now and do a free App Service plan, and all of this stuff would still work great. I always like to pin my Logic Apps to the dashboard so that I know when they're done being uh, provisioned. So let's go ahead and just pin it to the dashboard and then click Create. And you'll see right now on my dashboard, it is creating this Logic App. And once it's done, it's going to open up for us and, and let us start working and editing it. Now, if you ever need to find your Logic Apps, maybe you have more than what's showing up on your dashboard. Let me actually go back. So this one finished and it opened straight to the designer, which is good. But if you ever need to get into other Logic Apps, on the left bar here, you have your Azure resources. You might see Logic Apps there if it's one of your frequently used ones or favorites. But if not, you can go ahead and just click the Browse button here and it lists all the Azure resources. And you can find Logic Apps here. You can click it. You should favorite it. It's definitely worth favoriting. And then it will show here by default. Um, and I can go ahead and click that and find any of the Logic Apps that I have created. Once you open a Logic App that is empty, it's going to default here to the Logic App Designer. Now, this is where I can build my Logic App. Uh, coming very shortly, there will be a selection screen here before this one to choose from a number of different templates so you don't have to start from scratch. But for right now, we're going to start from scratch. We're going to build this workflow to add an item to Wonderlist. I have a Wonderlist here called Work, which is empty right now. And I want to add a to do whenever I have a new uh, urgent email. So here, the first part of my workflow is a trigger. So right here, this is listing some frequently used triggers. These are events that it can be notified when something happens. So I can say, like, hey, whenever there's a new post on my Facebook timeline, Whenever I have a file created in a OneDrive folder, uh, if there's an RSS feed item that I want to be subscribed to, Salesforce, Service Bus, and so on. Uh, but this isn't everything. There's more APIs here and connectors that we have for triggers that don't show up in this list. You can click this Available APIs button if you want to see the full list, or you can search in the text box. And in this case, I want to trigger, as I mentioned, on an email. Now, I'll call out quickly here you'll see that we have two email triggers. One's an Office 365 email, and the other one's an Outlook.com email address. The difference here is actually where the email inbox is hosted. So if you have a company Office 365 email account, and that inbox is actually being hosted by your company um, through like Exchange Online, you would use this email trigger. But if you're just using the consumer Outlook.com, like your email address is jeffholland at Outlook.com, uh, you could use the Outlook.com email trigger. In this case, I want to use my own company email, my Microsoft email account, which is an Office 365 email. So I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, this is the trigger I want. Now, I've actually used this trigger before, and it knows that. So it actually has connected automatically to my previous connection. I can change that connection or I can create a new one. It's very possible that if this is your first Logic app and you've never created one before, it would be the same as if I say create a new connection here. And you would see this screen, which would say, hey, before we can connect to your Office 365 account, we need you to sign in. Uh, I've already done the signing in. Uh, so I'm actually going to go ahead and use the, the connection that I've used before. So let's go ahead and choose that email trigger and choose my personal email account, which I've connected to. Now, I have the option here to choose a different folder path. Maybe I only want to monitor a specific folder in my inbox. Uh, in this case, I, I just want any emails coming into my inbox, so I'm going to leave that as is. Now, many actions have this advanced uh, parameters piece, this dot, dot, dot menu here, where if I click this, you'll notice it's going to show me many pieces uh, of advanced configuration that I could do. 
In this case, for this trigger, these are all extra filters. So I could say, hey, I only want to trigger when it's in my inbox, and maybe if it's to me, right? Or maybe it's to a, a alias that I want to monitor or whatever, right? I could do it if it's from a specific person I want this to trigger. In this case, the importance, I actually want to change. And I only want to trigger this if it's high importance. Uh, I could say if it's a, has an email attachment, uh, do I need to include the email attachments in the trigger? Uh, or do I want to filter the subject? So you see here I have these advanced configuration parameters. They're optional. If they were required, you'd see a little red asterisk here. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and say, hey, whenever I get a high important email in my inbox, do something else. Now, once I have my trigger set, I can start adding actions. And what's going to happen is whenever that new email comes, the Logic App Engine is going to grab that new email. It's going to find it, and it's going to start my workflow. And now it says, okay, what do I need to do next? So I see a plus button here. I can either add an action right now. So I could add an action and add, add this to Wonderlist, or I could add a condition, which is you know do some logic. If something is equal to something, if my email attachments are you know greater than five megabytes, do something else. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to add a condition, which is if it doesn't have re or if it's not a reply in the subject line. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what adding a condition is like. And this added the condition block for me. You see here at the top, I have my condition logic here. And I have a yes branch. So if the condition is true, then I need to add some actions. And if the condition is false, then I need to add some actions as well. Uh, and at this part right now, I have a designer. It's helping me create my comparison. So I can choose a value at the top. So choose something to compare. Maybe at this case, I want to say if the subject line. One nice thing here with Logic Apps to help you quickly create it is that for all of your actions in your workflow, the designer knows what properties are available from your previous actions. So you hear, see here, these are all email properties, right? This is the to line. This is the subject line, the from. Here's the actual content of the email. I have some more advanced properties here that I could see, like is the email read, is the email HTTP or HTML, excuse me. Uh, but this allows me right here, so for like my condition, I mentioned I want the condition to be if the subject contains re, then do something. So I can just click that subject token and it's going to go ahead and add that directly into my condition. Uh, so if the subject and here I can choose the relationship. So do I want it to contains, does not contains, is equal to. And in this case, I want to say does not contain. So if the subject does not contain. And here for the value as well, I could click another token. But in this case, I just know the value I need to compare it to is three, which means don't trigger this if it's a reply, only if it's the first email in a thread. OK, so I have my trigger, I have my condition, and now I can add my action. Uh, I have the option here. I'm not going to go into it because this is getting started. I could do an advanced condition. Maybe I have ands or ors or some more advanced logic that I need to do. That's all possible, uh, and you can find details in our workflow definition, which we'll go into a little bit later. So now I'm going to go ahead and just add my action. And in this case, again, I have a list of a bunch of actions and connectors that we support out of the box. Now you'll notice this list is different than the first list I was looking at because these aren't triggers. These are actions, uh, and there's a lot more actions than there are triggers. Uh, again, these are the frequently used actions. I could search here to find things that might not be listed, like if I want to see all the Salesforce actions, I can type in Salesforce here, and it's going to list all the Salesforce things. Uh, in this case, I want to use Wonderlist, so I'm going to go ahead and type in Wonderlist. It's going to say, hey, great, here's all the things you can do with Wonderlist. You can create a list. In this case, I want to create a task. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Again, if I'd never done this before, it would ask me to log in, but I have connected already to my own wonder list. Again, a nice thing about this designer is it can actually look at my wonder list account and tell me, hey, I see you actually have two lists in your wonder list account. You have an inbox and a work list. So I can go ahead and click work right here. I didn't have to go worry about any API IDs or figuring out what lists were available. The designer just built that all for me. And now what do I want for the title of my task? And in this case, let's just make the title um urgent email and i want to add the subject so again something else i did there is i was able to type some text and click some tokens i could add more tokens if i wanted to uh, but that should be good enough for now all right so here's the logic app that we've created on an email there's a condition and create a task it's a very simple one this is just a getting started one when i'm completed i can go ahead and click the save button 
It's going to save this and validate it and make sure that it's valid. And it's going to start checking my email inbox. Okay. So I can go ahead now and close this designer. I don't need it anymore. Uh, and let's go ahead now and send an email to myself that's going to start this trigger. So let's send one to me and say this is an urgent email. And we'll set the high importance on it and go ahead and send it to myself. Now, let me walk you through while that's getting ready to trigger a few pieces of the resource blade that are useful to know. So here again, if I need to go back into the designer, I can go ahead and click the edit button here uh, to understand or to go back into the designer. I could delete my logic app. If there's an update available for the scheme, I could update it. I can also tell it to go and check for an email now. So maybe I don't want it to wait for the trigger to find it. Uh, it's going to check every few seconds to see if there's a new email. But if I'm like, hey, I know that I want you to look now, I can go ahead and say, hey, actually go look for an email right now. Uh, which is going to go at that moment and check for a new email. Uh, you'll notice actually what happened there when I told it to check for an email, a new run appeared because it found that email that I sent. And so I can click into my run details and I can understand exactly what happened in my workflow. I can see all the actions that executed. I can see the different pieces. I can go ahead and even click into that action to understand what were the inputs and the outputs to that API. I can see here a trigger section, which will show me what was the outputs of the email trigger. You can see here it says, hey, this was from me. These are some of the guts uh, that you can use to help debug. Uh, again, as well, I can look at if I'm ever wondering what's happening with the trigger, I can go ahead and click on a trigger name and see the history. So you can see all the times it's checking for a new email. You can see here that it's fired. This was the time where it picked up my email. Uh, and I have some details about that trigger as well. So let's go ahead here. And if I switch over to Wonderlist, you'll see that in the time that I've been showing you that stuff, I now have this new item in my task list uh, which has this urgent email which was added automatically by logic apps so hopefully that's a quick getting started to help you understand how you can build your first logic apps and how the different pieces fit together just quickly before i uh, finish off this broadcast if you have any questions feel free to email me uh, any questions you might have you saw my email address at j-e-h-o-l-l-a-n at microsoft.com again some useful resources is if i'm in the designer you'll see there's a help button right here this will actually open up our quick start guides, which gives me some information like what are logic apps, create a logic app, which does a tutorial, an introductory video. Uh, I can also get some more documentation type stuff around, hey, what's this workflow definition behind the scenes of a logic app? What do I understand, like some of the guts of the workflow definition? We have a GitHub repository with some community connectors for APIs that don't show up by default. We have a forum where you can ask questions. You can provide feedback on our user voice. Uh, so these are all very useful links that you can use. Uh, one of my favorite documentation pages is this one that you can get to once you come to the documentation under getting started here. It says examples and scenarios. And it has a bunch of different scenarios and examples between you know, creating an Azure deployment template, how to monitor a Logic App, how to deploy a Logic App from Visual Studio, diagnose, diagnosing issues with Logic Apps, so there's lots to work on here. Um, you'll see here I'm just scrolling down the list, and this list is always growing. Uh, so that's kind of the basics here of a Logic App and, and working through our first Logic App. So hopefully you found that helpful. Again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us at Twitter, at LogicApps.io. Send me an email. Reach out to us on our forums. Uh, and we'll be doing more of these webcasts in the future. You'll notice on our channel we actually do monthly webcasts. We'll be doing one in about two weeks' time with some more service updates. We also have a Logic Apps blog where we give some service updates on all the new things that are coming. Uh, there's always exciting things being added to the platform. Uh, so feel free to ask us any questions, reach out on email, and hopefully you found this helpful uh, and we'll help you from there. So thanks so much.